guys, it's Glenn from GlennCarCollection.com and today we're reviewing the BMW 330. This is a 2022 model, it's X-Drive, and this is my loaner car for the day while my M340i X-Drive, which is a 2020 model, gets service. And this is a real cool car. So in this video, we're gonna figure out, do you really need to spend the extra money on the M340 or is the 330 just fine? So we have this beautiful blue, you know I love blue cars. Mine is Porto Mal blue, which is a, a lighter blue. I love this interior. I bought mine off the lot with the black interior, but with the heat of the summer, I would probably go with a color like this. This uh, dark tan interior is really striking with this color exterior. Now I'm six feet tall and I can easily sit behind myself back here. Even a hockey player, old hockey player like me could get in and it's very comfortable back here. I have a ton of headroom being six feet tall and I have plenty of legroom, a ton of legroom. Uh, the only downside is I have size 13 feet and they kind of don't fit under the seat here, but otherwise I have plenty of knee room. So you have the new USB ports back here. You have your own climate control. I believe heated seats may be optional in the back. I think I have them on my car. Now, if you get the M340, they're all M Sports, so that's standard. To get the M Sport on this car, you have to pay another $5,000 or so. Huge trunk. I play ice hockey, and I fit no problem my hockey bag in here in my helmet. Uh, the only thing, uh, there's a pass-through. You can put your sticks or skis through it in the middle. The pass-through may actually be optional. I put the sticks inside the car, but I can fit everything in the back here, no problem. Sharp-looking car. You'd be hard pressed to know the difference whether this was an M340 or a 330. The easiest way to tell is the grills. Most of them that you see have grills like this. That's the 330. I have that more perforated grills, which is the 340. I guess it's a nice day, so everybody's going to the park today. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open the hood and show you the engine. You do two clicks. There's no secondary latch. So there's no latch, we pressed it twice. And here is the four cylinder and power turbo. So you have 255 horsepower, 295 foot pounds of torque, four cylinder engine. Now the M340i X drive that I have is actually a turbocharged six cylinder. Top. <laughs> All right, so let's go inside. Take the key out of my pocket. Oh, we'll start the car, put a seatbelt up first. So if you were in this car, honestly, you wouldn't know the difference between my car and that car because trim is, is uh, the same, similar steering wheel. And now they have the heated steering wheel. It's a hot day, so this is trying to cool me off. I'll put it higher. Uh, make the sacrifice for you guys. So my M2 used to have the heated steering wheel around the side, which is tough. Here you can press the heated steering wheel right here and you can actually set it. So if it's under like 37 degrees or whatever, it'll come on automatically, that in your heated seats. You have heated seats in the three series, including my car, the M340. You cannot get cooled seats. So you have to step up for a five series. So that's one downside if you're on the fence between both. Probably your budget will allow one or the other. Uh, you can get a 360 camera optional. This has the reverse camera, which is still very good. If you get the uh, optional 360 camera, you would have cameras all over the car, including the front. You could also uh, have the camera come on automatically with the 360 camera. If you have a steep driveway, you go to the doctor or gas station. When you get to a certain address, I think you can save five of them where the camera will come on so you don't uh, hit the curb or bottom out. Controls are very easy. You have the uh, cruise controls here. This you can actually limit your speed if you want. These are your controls. You can scroll through the menus and also to uh, take calls through your Bluetooth. Any of the safety options here, blind spot, lane keeping, that's all in there. Some of those features are optional, like if you want that Distronic type cruise control with the stop and go. Parking brake, just like the old handbrake, up to set it. Push down as if we were putting the handbrake down. You got plenty of storage in the middle here, uh, can fit a lot of things, plus another USB port. Now you have a different outlet here, like say for your radar detector, you gotta get an adapter, because uh, if you put in your regular radar detector, it won't, uh, it won't function there. Uh, HVAC controls, you have hard buttons for. You can go in a lot of stuff in the menu here. It's got a very good navigation. This is an updated iDrive unit. You have Apple CarPlay, and Apple CarPlay, I believe, is wireless. Let's just see. Uh, wireless, yep, I'm listening to car podcast. I did an Instagram live with Spike Ferrison. I don't know if any of you guys saw it. If you did, comment below. All right, so now let's see if the four-cylinder car 
is more than enough compared to my six cylinder. Remember, they're both turbocharged units. And the biggest thing about these, these cars, so you go, oh, I don't want the four cylinders downside. First of all, this gets fantastic gas mileage. You'll get well into the 30s on the highway. You'll probably average mid to high 20s. I have averaged really well with my M340 and I have my foot to the floor all the time. In fact, I'm going through rear tires and I have only 15,000 miles. The car is there. We'll go over that uh, just for the scheduled service. So when we get the M340i back, we'll do another video on that. So remember to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss that video. All right, so which way should we go? Uh, you know what, we'll go this way. We'll take the long way. So the first thing you'll notice on this car is the acceleration. Now we're in comfort mode, so there's a slight delay when we hit it. So with the four-cylinder cars especially, I like driving in sport mode. The throttle response is more immediate, and it just makes the car feel more alive, and you have a much better sound. Now the four-cylinder sound in this, the turbocharged motor, sounds a lot to me like the 718 Cayman, which also has a turbocharged motor. Now the biggest number for that 255 horsepower compared to the 382 I have in my M340, what really counts in the real world is torque. And this has about 295, 296 foot-pounds of torque. I believe it's 295. And honestly, that makes all the difference in the world. So back in the 90s, you know, Corvettes had 300 horsepower. You know, my 993 Turbo, which was a 96 model, was 400 horsepower. And that was crazy fast. But if you bought most cars, they were 250, 260, 300 horsepower. I remember the Corvette, like I had a 95 Corvette and it was 300 horsepower and about 330 foot-pounds of torque. And it, that would seem like an unbelievable number for a C4 Corvette. And then, you know, now all these cars have four, five, 600 horsepower. And here we have an entry-level luxury car that is 295 foot-pounds of torque. And that torque is more important than anything because that's what you're using in daily driving. You're not taking my car or this car to the racetrack, right? So it's all about merging on the highway, accelerating to pass somebody, pulling out of a driveway, gas station, what have you. And that's where you really feel that torque. So I think around town, it's so much better to have the turbocharged motors because you kind of have not instant power because there's turbo lag in any turbo, but you have pulling power at low speeds. I love, you know, one of my favorite cars ever, and I've owned a, a couple of them, E46 M3, and say I had an E90 M3 as well. Those high revving motors are so much fun on a back road. But the reality is they don't have any power down low, right? Like an S2000 and uh, even my Audi R8 V10, the power is up high in the rev band. So driving around doing mundane chores, you really wish you had the turbo power to uh, so you had some passing power or merging power, whether it's on the highway or around town. Now, one thing BMW does phenomenal is comfort. Here's a nice BMW right there. So comfort goes a long way in these cars. Oh my. Comfort goes a long way in these cars. And BMW does a great compromise of ride and handling. This car I could drive all day. It's all day comfortable. Now, if you want it to look more like an M car, and again, it's an M Sport, you don't have a real M motor, you can pay $5,000, gives you the M package. I believe it stiffens the suspension because my M340i X-Drive definitely has a stiffer suspension than this car. Now the power is uh, the turbocharged power, the torque is available low in the power band. So it makes the car feel faster than it is. Zero to 60 time is about 5.3 seconds. I think in the real world, I bet you it's a lot closer to 5.1. The downside of doing these side roads is during the day, everybody's taking their time. Nobody comes close to the speed limit. Speed limit's 40, we're going 30. <laughs> but uh, it's a very comfortable car. You could fit your whole family in it. It's, it's a five seater. You could definitely fit four people comfortably. For the size of the car that it is, it's got a huge trunk. Now this is the same size essentially as an E39 M5, and I believe it's actually wider, but there's a ton of room in here. You know, unless I'm really going fast on the New Jersey Turnpike trying to pass somebody, I don't think I'm gonna notice the difference in power. And this is gonna be substantially, probably about 200 a month less on a lease or a finance. 
we'll get up to uh, some more open roads here that we can accelerate. But I like driving in sport mode. You can configure your sport mode. We'll drive it in standard mode for now. Just makes the throttle a lot more peppier and responsive. Comfort mode is exactly that. It's meant to be comfortable. So there is a delay when you put your foot down before the transmission will kick down. Now you have an eight speed ZF automatic transmission. So it has a torque converter. It's not a dual clutch. And honestly, you know, you're not taking this car to racetrack anyway, and you're probably not tearing up your favorite mountain road with it. So realistically, you're going to use this for commuting and traffic, merging on the highway, stop and go traffic. So a torque converter is much better suited to that task. What's great about the three series too, it comes in a million different colors. So you should have no problem f f uh, finding a color that you desire. And I think the interior is really well. I mean, is really good. Uh, compared to its competition, Mercedes and Audi may have 911, 997. Looked like a base to me. Base Carrera, rear drive. Uh, the competition, I think, is a step up in interior. But I think as far as functionality goes, this kills those cars in handling. BMWs typically weigh less than the competition and they're more nimble. So I think from an enthusiast driver point of view, this is the car you want. I guarantee your neighbors, your friend, your significant other, your girlfriend is not going to notice the difference in looks between the 330 340. You really can tell by the grill and you have to a key eye to know the differences. I have an M340 and I can tell you 99% of the cars I see or at least 90% of them are actually 330s, not M340s. So you do get really good pulling power there. You can feel the 295 foot pounds of torque. In sport mode, the throttle is more responsive. It's more instantaneous. Now it's not an electric car. I just filmed some BMW electric cars at BMW Tenafly today. And those cars don't even need to kick down, right? The torque's available at zero RPM. So you hit the gas and you go. So you're getting already a faster zero to 60 time or 60 to 100 time, what have you, because there's no delay. It's, it's instant acceleration. So special thanks to BMW Tenafly for providing this loaner car for me and allowing me to film it. Now these are optional, I believe these gauges here, you can get the standard and we did a 330 on this channel with the standard display, which uh, I forget if they were actually analog or looked analog, but I liked it. It was like the classic display. And if you know where we are now, comment below. <laughs> this is BMW's North American headquarters. All right, so the acceleration is really good here. It does feel from the seat of the pants more than 5.3 seconds. You know, my NSX is about five seconds, 5.2 seconds to 60. So this car, because I think BMW is conservative with their 5.3 to 60, I think it's more 5.1, is as fast as the original NSX. And it's faster than the, uh, what they definitely faster than the NA1 NSX, which is uh, 1991 to 1996 model years that had a zero to 60 time of about 5.7 seconds. And this car starts at 42.9. And I'll tell you right now, it's a heck of a lot of car. You know, you can option a Camry to $40,000. Wouldn't you much rather drive a BMW that has much better handling, much better suspension, nicer interior, uh, and it'll impress your friends and neighbors more. But more than that, it's a, uh, it's a great car to drive. You can, you know, option out any safety features you want. If you really need the power, then do what I did with the M340i X-Drive. I like the extra power. I always take the bigger motor on cars when I look at them because I always, I drive so much being a commercial real estate broker, I have to get around the slow pokes in the left lane. So the people that set their cruise control on 55 or 65, I just have to be able to get around them. So now we're gonna come through some turns here and the handling is actually impressive, it really is. Now here in the Northeast, all these cars are all wheel drive. So if you can get where you live a rear drive version of the car, it must be phenomenal, whether it's the 330 or the M340. All 340s are, are M Sports. Here in the Northeast, the dealers only stock them in all wheel drive because we have weather. Now here's another slow car going in front of me, but this is a nice set of turns here. If people want to go slow, go slow, but why cut in front of the guy trying to do the speed limit? Body roll is really a minimum in this car. Visibility is really good. You have very thick A-pillars now for rollover safety 
in uh, cars and SUVs and the, you still have really good sight lines here. The Harman Kardon stereo is very good, so I highly recommend that option. This car is very efficient, so it's got the power when you want it. It's roomy, it gets great gas mileage. It competes very well. I think it hands down beats the C-Class, beats the A4. Those cars are certainly good cars if you chose those, but I think this new 3 Series is honestly, you know, the best 3 Series probably since the E90X and the, uh, the E46. It is uh, definitely a step up in generation over the previous 3 Series. I liked it so much that I made my daily driver this version of the 3 Series, and uh, I think BMW hit it out of the park as far as driving, looks, and handling. All right, so special thanks again to BMW of Tenafly for providing this car. I think 90% of you out there, though we'd all love more power of the M340, I think would be fine with this car. And I think you really wouldn't notice the difference except in extreme conditions. Uh, if I couldn't do the M340, which I probably couldn't do now because the lease price has gone up too high, I think I'd be perfectly happy if I had this as my daily driver. All right, guys, you know what to do. If you're watching this far, you should be a subscriber. If you're already a subscriber, hit that notification bell. Like and share this video and leave your thoughts with comments below. Would you take this or an A4 or a C-Class and do you think this is the value play when you compare it against my M340? No wrong answer. Let me know in the comments. I read and will respond to each and every one. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time.